Access Control and Identity Management, Chapter 4. The area of access control and identity management is typically core and fundamental to any information security pursuits. When we say access control in general, this could relate to controlling who can get onto your networks, who can get into your computers, and also who can get into your buildings. We discussed the physical security in Chapter 1 of the course. But let's see what the Security Plus knowledge objectives are for access control and identity management. We need to be familiar with the fundamental concepts and best practices of how you do the main ingredients of access control, which are authentication, authorization, and the overall process itself of access control. We also need to be familiar with how we do individual user authentication through what are called credentials, and also different types of enterprise services, such as RADIUS, TACAX, different types of single sign-on. We also need to be familiar with how we deploy security controls in managing the foundation of any application environment, and that's account management, what each user can do, and also how they're authenticated to the network and to the system. Our agenda for access control includes, first of all, what are the basic concepts? How does access control work? And then we go to the initial component, which is, I want to make sure it's really marked out at the end of the line. So that's where we have user authentication and identity management. And this would include the credentials, such as a password, a digital certificate, a smart card, a token. And then how could Mark sign on once and be automatically authenticated to, say, the 10 applications he has to use every day at work? That would be single sign-on, sometimes referred to as reduced sign-on. And then, how do we authenticate users coming over a network? And two prominent protocols were used in the past, PAP and CHAP, and also modern day EAP. We're gonna find out all about those in this chapter. And then, carrying the concepts of extensible authentication protocol, EAP forward, we're gonna look at AAA. AAA, in terms of network vernacular, is authentication, authorization and accounting. You could say that AAA is what network people call access control. Data access control is the next step. Once I know it's marked, then I need to figure out what he's authorized to access. In today's world, with more and more of the computing being over distributed protocols, we have to have a way to centrally manage user credentials and also their authorization privileges, and that's where the lightweight directory access protocol, directory services, such as those found in Active Directory, come into play. As I mentioned before, when we actually bring this down to the grassroots of applying it in an organization, there are important things we have to do with user accounts. For example, if they have high privilege, they have to be held to a higher standard in terms of, for example, how often they have to change their password. And then we'll wrap up the chapter and also give you opportunities to review and reinforce your understanding of access control with free practice tests and other review questions. So what's the purpose of access control? We want to make sure that authorized, again, keyword authorized users, programs, or other computer systems, for example, those in the network, can observe, modify, or otherwise take possession of a computer system. Only authorized users can use the data resources. We also want to limit what those users can get to when they get on a particular computer system so they don't have blanket access or full admin rights if it's not required by their job. And we should always consider access control to be the first line of defense against unauthorized entry, access, and use, and also abuse, if you will. And it's there to also help us protect our valuable information resources from disclosure, modification, and destruction. Remember, in Chapter 1, we started the course with the security triad, confidentiality. The enemy of confidentiality is unauthorized disclosure. Integrity, the enemy of integrity is unauthorized modification. And the enemy of availability is destruction or other denial of service. Now we start our access control deployment with a policy. We have to figure out what our goals are in determining who can get to what resources within our network and our computing environment. To review some of the concepts we covered in chapter one, which are fundamental to access control, one of the hot buttons with IT auditors throughout the world, and also for that matter, financial auditors, separation of duties. You divide the roles and responsibilities of different individuals 
so that one task is not done from start to finish by one individual. Examples of lack of separation of duties is if developers in QA come under one regime or security and developers, they need to be separate. So security, who would review the secure design of applications, for example, must not come under the same division head as the developers. 